Hello there, Hello. everybody. Welcome to another. Why week. are we here? <laughs> another episode of a BJJ marriage, episode number nine. That's Why not what I agree with this many. <laughs> <laughs> we set them up. I told him. Uh, it's like he just jumped you into a movie. Like what? You told me there'd be candy. <laughs> That's afterwards. Oh. We need to keep you here, otherwise you just leave. Because right. <laughs> I'm not going to a candy store on Tuesday. For Easter, not For Easter going. candy. Yeah. <laughs> we are your hosts, Nick Lee, Brittany Lee, Lee, and a special guest today. Oh, it's no. <laughs> <laughs> we have our special Those of you guests. who know me, you know I don't like oats. It's, it's just a dumb something. This is Brenton Fitzgerald. Hey. This is my father, who we always talk about, our two yes. straight black belt professor who just went to Brazil and the person who actually got us into jujitsu. Yeah. Crazy. Tried for twenty four years for this kid. Okay, it was twenty three. I started when I was twenty three. So Thank I you very much. Apologize for my my ugly <laughs> facial hair. We're doing mustache march here at uh, Fluid. And yep. um, this is gross. It's like getting into my mouth for so long. <laughs> yeah, mine's starting to get wiry really, and like really coming big. straight out. I, I was thinking about that. Like this is this or next week are the worst times you could actually have me on this show <laughs> because it's just hideous right now. Uh, but I'm doing full Sanchez for the. It'll be like this. It's, it's a great bad. way to memorialize. Yeah, it's gonna be real bad. And then <laughs> I'm shaving this this week, so it'll be oh. little muckies. We've quite a few people at Fluid doing that mustache yeah. march competition. All That's the girls fun. hate it. Yeah, yeah, the girls are not looking as good as the guys with their mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine's coming in pretty well. <laughs> I'll bring the wax kit. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I liked Ellie's post when she was saying, "I think I can speak on behalf of all of the women at Fluid. You're all hideous." <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, okay. it's pretty gross. I can't wait for it to be over. And there's some guys who have a full beard and mustache right now that always have it, and yep. they look worse than normal. Yes, because it's mustache march. <laughs> like they're blending in. It's pretty bad. <laughs> we're collectively bringing the average like down. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We were like a seven. Now we're like a six. Yeah, let's say five <laughs> and a half. Five and a half is probably more accurate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we always like to start out with, how was your week in jujitsu? Let's start with ladies first. Uh, my week sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got, I was stupid. I decided to roll really, really hard again because I really wanted to try it and see how I felt, mm -hmm. and it didn't go well. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to talk about my week. But the seminar, we did a seminar for Mike Coy, our black belt who was on last week, and yes. he did fantastic a fantastic seminar. job. Seminar. It. it can't be overstated how much you need to go to seminars. Yeah. Blew my mind. Yeah. A couple hey. of things. It's just, it's cool when you get to learn two or three moves in a day, but when you're learning 15, you're guaranteed you're gonna take one of those and you're gonna use it for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like every seminar I've ever been to, it's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna use that forever. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially when a seminar is a complete system yep. of moves. Mm -hmm. Cause that's something you can't, normally you have to piece together the moves that you've learned over yeah. the, over time. But when you get like a, here's this, 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 and this, and yeah. this is how this it all is works. the sequence mm -hmm. of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so Mike's seminar was called Stop the Smash. So it was basically trying to stop someone from putting you in a terrible position. Instead of just learning how to get out of a terrible position, he was trying to teach you how to prevent getting there completely. Yeah, so it was the in-between of when your guard is getting passed to when you're already getting smashed. That transition point and what you can do to prevent it. It's a great perspective. Yeah, I loved cool. everything about it. And it was actually a different frame than what mm -hmm. everybody else uses. Yep. And it, it yeah. just changes your your whole way of thinking. Yeah. Sometimes when you go to someone I like them. Well, he asked Nick and I if we could be his ookies for it, and unfortunately I couldn't do too much because it was a lot of pressure passing. But he was working with us on it last Saturday, and. We were going through it and he showed me he's like yeah so instead of framing on the hip you're gonna frame here and I looked at him and I'm like what and he was laughing at me he's like your face right now is really funny <laughs> <laughs> your face always funny mm -hmm. Damn. <laughs> she Whatever. doesn't laugh at my jokes though she doesn't laugh at your jokes either <laughs> they're the no. same person it's weird <laughs> it's like married Mexican, my dad, kind of. Asian it's <laughs> the same person yeah yeah there's got to be like a like a white person that's the same as us somewhere and a black person, Josh, and an Antarctican. Josh is white. Josh is 
Josh is not the same person as us. There's some things that are eerily similar. Well, every human is eerily similar. No, there's things that Josh people. has said that I look at Nick and I'm like, you just said that. Yeah, but that. I don't say that. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're blending into me. You're right. Or into Josh. <laughs> Thank God I am not. Shout mm. <laughs> uh, out to Josh Janus. Like All right. Me. How was your week in jujitsu? Uh, mine was pretty fantastic. So we can start from last mm-hmm. week's Saturday. <laughs> uh, last week's Saturday, um, I went to uh, a seminar with my first instructor, Henry Matamoros. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, so that was Godfather Saturday. Godfather of Milwaukee Jiu-Jitsu. Godfather of Milwaukee Jiu-Jitsu, for sure. Almost every school has ties to uh, Henry. And, uh, you know, he was the only real jujitsu school. We had fight schools and catch wrestling and stuff. Uh, but we had no real jujitsu schools other than Henry for years. And uh, I was fortunate enough to find him and uh, I was able to train under him for a little over five years uh, before he moved away and moved to Denver. But I got to go back and see him uh, at the school that he built that he gave over to uh, Jake Clip and um, Zach Otto. Mm. So I uh, went to Pier Vida. There were about 40 or so people at the seminar for him. Um, Did you sign up? Yeah, six black belts, I think. Six or seven oh, nice. black belts. Um, so Ten years ago, that would have been crazy, hey? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Real, real crazy. But um, I got to roll with some of the black belts there and get to roll with some other people uh, at the seminar. So that was really cool. Uh, and then the following day, he did another seminar at Nova Gyms. And... Uh, about 25 30 people at that wow. and um, I think there were five black belts at that and uh, I got awesome. to roll with a couple of them so uh, I got to roll with different black belts that I either hadn't rolled with in a long time or had never rolled with before That's cool. um, over the weekend last weekend so that was awesome um, and then uh, you know got to come back home to fluid and, and teach and uh, I enjoy teaching as much as I enjoy doing these days. And um, that's good. Yeah. You know, then we had Mike's seminar yesterday, which was fantastic stuff. And you know, Mike's, to take a picture. Yeah, <laughs> Mike's a black belt here at Fluid, and um, you know he's got great stuff. I always love learning from him. One of the cool things about Fluid is that we have we have four black belts here, including myself, and we all come from different backgrounds because. Fluid has only been around for four years now, four and a half, and every black belt that's come here, they have had seven, ten years, fifteen years of training before they came under my training. Mm-hmm. So they have their own style, they have their own game, they have their own techniques, they have their own stuff that they do, and I've I've either added to it or um, or nothing I, i've added nothing to it and they just <laughs> or complimented it yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but but they already had what they had so it's, it's like when i went to professor john friedland you know i had like eight years of jujitsu at that mm-hmm. time like i wasn't i didn't need to be taught foundations he didn't he didn't need to instill in me jujitsu he just had to tweak some of the stuff and he didn't really change my jujitsu as much as he changed my perspective and my personality of uh, approach towards people and I was with John Freeland for seven years mm-hmm. and um, he didn't teach me a ton of jiu-jitsu because I was already a brown belt for like three years when I went to him um, but he taught me a lot about life and he became a mentor yeah not of jiu-jitsu but of jiu-jitsu <laughs> jiu-jitsu <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so um, yeah so I got to see three seminars in uh, in the last days. week, wow. and uh, got to teach some. Uh, we had Nerf fights on Wednesday <laughs> here with Nerf yes. guns. That was fun. Um, yeah, we had our casino night where we played oh, okay. yeah. uh, some cribbage. And well, nobody played blackjack though, huh? No, no. everyone no. was in everyone poker was and cribbage. We played hold and cribbage, yeah. Hold them and cribbage. Yeah. yeah. So we had a casino night here at Fluid, um, where we had a bunch of people rolling, or probably five, ten people rolling at. Yeah. The whole night through. We couldn't find a dice to lose our limbs. Oh, I had, I had, I bought dice for it. Mm-hmm. Oh, we, they were unopened. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the <end of> the <laughs> I see it now. They're right there. Yeah, <laughs> they were up by the curvature boards. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah, that's where they are. But 
That was fun. We'll, we'll have to do that again because uh, our events here are always pretty cool. We try yeah. to do an event, what, every third Friday of the month? Yep, every third Friday. And then and every third Wednesday we're going to start doing Nerf Gun Wars. And, and I believe April's event is a woman's only. Oh, really? Yeah, so we'll try to get... Can't wait for that. It's a month. I know, it's but... A month. So I actually am going to need you to run it because I'll be in um, Atlanta. Atlanta. Cool. Yeah. So if anyone's uh, a woman and you're watching this. Yeah, <laughs> Mike or Bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just come up to Greenfield, Wisconsin, yeah. wherever you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wherever you are, uh, it's an open invitation for women. Uh, we had sh almost 20 yeah. last time we did this about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, we do an event every third Friday. And then uh, every first Saturday, mm -hmm. we do uh, potlucks here, that's great. where come in, uh, we train for hour and a half or so, hour, hour and a half, and then everybody brings a dish, and we eat afterwards and hang out for another hour or so, and mm -hmm. talk about jujitsu, talk about life, and enjoy. Yes, that's it's always a good time. just not on camera, so. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. 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 How was your week? My week in jujitsu was freaking awesome I'd say <laughs> I had um, a lot of good role well Saturday specifically after the seminar first of all the seminar was awesome and I had a great time being the Uki I love being the Uki I feel like a professional Uki sometimes <laughs> 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 but I do really enjoy being the Uki he's the Uki for everyone in case you're wondering like literally every instructor tries to use him John Donher said that he enjoyed being the Uki on your Henzo oh yeah because he was able to feel how it, yeah. how it happened, yeah. Yep, yeah, and I learned visually and kinesthetically, which means by feeling. So, putting all that together. Some mansplaining stuff? <laughs> mansplaining? They were super mansplaining. That's cool. It was like, kinesthetically, that's movement. Life coach, <laughs> Nick Lee. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the modalities of how yeah, we learn. Coach. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I love being the Uki, so being the Uki for the whole seminar. He's happy. Yep, I remember. I hope it picks it up. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that. And then uh, we had a couple guests from out of town that were at the seminar mm -hmm. that I had some really good exchanges with. And uh, this last week was also, um, I was doing my hardest rolls this week so I can heal up over the next week and a half and be completely ready for competition, which is in two weekends from now, mm -hmm. yeah, which is super exciting. But I'm really looking forward to the competition. My elbow is like 98%, so if any of my comp <laughs> competitors are watching, attack this arm. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited to get out there and compete again. And um, there were actually, I was telling you when I was coming home that I had some really bad rolls this week, mm -hmm. but I felt like that uh, allowed me to remember that I can't go into the competition feeling like, oh yeah, it's going to be easy. Right. <laughs> That's right. You I, asked I can never me. Have, I can't have that mentality and go into it. Yeah, you asked me this week if you should do intermediate or advanced nogi, and I was like, just do intermediate. Like you have the rest of your life to do advanced. Yeah. So you might as well do intermediate while you can before you are too good for intermediate. You're still gonna get really tough rolls in intermediate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know you want to challenge yourself, <coughs> but like I said, you have the rest of your life, so might as well yeah. do intermediate and enjoy. When you said that, I was like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. Yeah. So come meet us in the Dells, April 3rd, Grappling Industry. Yeah. It's going to be great. It should be fun. Are you competing? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Um, I'm still fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was I was a bit hangry this last week, too. No, it was fun. <laughs> I, I rolled with uh, five different black belts over the weekend, and uh, I, did, I did great against four of them. Uh, felt really good. Beat him up pretty good, and and the one guy took my back right away. I just I underestimated him because he was <laughs> a small guy, mm -hmm. and uh, he arm dragged me and climbed on my back, and I had to fight from my back for most of the round. Wow. Okay. Yeah. He. Uh, I love those arm drags. Yeah. Well, he's 140 pounds, or maybe 145. Like wow. Tiny guy, and uh, I've known him for a while. He's a black belt down in uh, Chicago from Alliance. Uh, his name's Tim. And um, no, I, I know he's a good grappler, but like right off the bat, within the first two seconds, it was <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I'll posture up, and I couldn't posture up because he had his whole body attached to me. So I was lifting 140 pounds plus his 
his black belt uh, ability to make that heavier. And yes. I was like, oh, this isn't good. And then he started to reach <laughs> around my neck and started to, to loop choke from the far side. Oh, geez. And I'm like, oh, I could probably get out of this. <laughs> so um, oh, man. I did end up getting out after a couple minutes of him being on my back. Um, yeah. Were you sore after that? Yeah, I was sore all weekend. Mm -hmm. I was sore all weekend. But um, yeah, I ended up passing his guard a couple times. Uh, and then he regarded because those short little limbs, man. Like, like you think if you think you're too small for jujitsu, mm. dude, being small is your biggest asset. Sometimes. Have you ever tried to armbar Lee Song? <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. She should be back actually. So oh, she's awesome. getting her second vaccine soon. She said awesome. she was coming back. Fantastic. So yeah, yeah it's cool to hear that black belts still think, oh, this is not good for me. I should probably do something about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I was, I was fine, even against the other black belts. Like, I never was in any danger. I put them in danger a few times, and I felt them go, oh, I should get out of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, he, uh, he took my back within the first few seconds, and uh, then I, I fought for a good two or three minutes, six-minute round. Uh, two or three minutes, I had to fight him off my back and not get choked, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, black belt on your back is not easy to not get choked. So yeah. it wasn't like, oh, I could just do this and put right. my back on the ground. It's like, oh, I'm trying to put my back on the ground, but his entire body is there. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, it was tough. So I'm just trying to think tools. of be, him being only like 140 pounds as a male. He must have had to work really, really hard in, throughout his jiu-jitsu career to get to the point where he's at because being small, you really can't depend on your strength or anything when you're learning everything. You have to learn the technique behind it, which is what I always say about women. Ellie and I were just talking about that yesterday, how women have to use technique in order to get out of bad situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh -huh. But that's the beauty of jujitsu is that it, it is about technique. Mm -hmm. And when you are bigger, you are stronger, you you aren't you don't have to get as good at jujitsu. You can rely on that strength, you can rely on that, that size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is is that when you run into someone who is right around your size or right around your strength, and you've relied on your strength, but they have refined their technique more than you, then then it makes a big difference that size and strength. So oh, yeah, there's. Have you ever heard of the Boyd rule? Because <coughs> the ten pounds, you've ten years. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you have you know size on someone, yeah, you you definitely have an advantage. But that that technique and those belt levels go up the weights as as the the weight uh difference mm -hmm. is there right so you know him being 140 pounds i outweighed him by 60 pounds but he had worked on his technique so well that he's got his go-to he knows he had he had direction he knew what he was doing like mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't oh i'm gonna try to get a grip and we're mm -hmm. there <laughs> it was as yeah. fast like we shook hands bumped i reached and i was <laughs> off to the side you know because most black belts, you know, we don't we don't try to kill each other like right. two, you know, rams coming at each other. We just kind of work for our grips, and then we get into whatever position. You'll settle in the guard, and I'll start passing, and I'll settle in the guard. You start, you know, we don't we don't sit there and like not like oh, competition we're match. Yeah, and uh, you know that's how I expected to roll with with Tim, and he was <laughs> he was out for my neck. <laughs> he was out for my neck, so which was good. I mean, it was it was good. Yeah. It was a fun roll. Um, and he did a couple things in that role that uh, were just black belty. Yeah. And very cool. That's so, cool. Yeah, it's, it's cool to see. <clears throat> it's fun to see. And I get compliments like that all the time. Like people are like, oh, that was super cool. It was really neat. It was, it was a cool sweep. You put your foot there. I couldn't move. Mm. And I couldn't get out from underneath. I get those things all the time. But it's not often that I have to give those to someone. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, you stopped everything I did. And That's awesome. So. so that kind of actually leads into what we really wanted to talk about 20 minutes later. <laughs> uh, we want to talk about how he has founded his jujitsu and how he more flows like lava, whereas you what brought up were brought up like flowing like water. And then yeah. you found your own technique Hadn't and style. Of water for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I mean okay. the Bruce Lee famous quote is, you know, flow like water. Be be water. Be water. Mind. You know, water can crash, water can flow, water becomes the bowl, mm -hmm. water can go around the the bowl. Mm -hmm. Water does the path of, goes the path of least resistance. Right. 
Yeah. Right. Be so. water, my friend. And th which is a great philosophy. Yes. Totally, and it translates very well to martial arts. But uh, Professor Renton here has really coined the term flow like lava. And he has a whole philosophy and technique and concept that's built upon flowing like lava. So as a short intro, what would flowing like lava be? Sure, so uh, that's, that's the motto we have here and it's my style of jujitsu and there are there are many different styles of jiu-jitsu. Um, I was a wrestler, and I was a, a very um, strong wrestler. I, I used to pick people up and put them down. <laughs> you are here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the description like. of my jiu-jitsu is, you are here. Yeah, we said if you had to describe your jiu-jitsu in three words, what would it be? And Dave, our friend Dave, says his jiu-jitsu is, you are, or, or no, I am here. You yeah. do not move to me, me. Yeah. I am here. I'm, I'm only going to move if I allow myself to move. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, so the concept came so for of fluid because fluid has a different viscosity than, um, than water, right? Viscosity? Yeah. Almost like kinesthetically. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> a lot better though. <laughs> but fluid has a different um, viscosity. And, and I guess I could mansplain that. But viscosity is just the thickness of a liquid. Mm -hmm. and, and water is very fine. It's, um, it doesn't pour very uh, slow. I mean, if you dump water out, it all comes out. But if you take oil, the oil has to seep and go. Or like molasses. Yeah, molasses is caramel. a little, little bit slower. Yeah, the viscosity of molasses and caramel is, is very slow. So I'm not molasses. I don't right. flow like molasses. I, although that, I'm sure there's some people that Brett. might. Brett, Brett I think might Brett flows like molasses. Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, man. Um, but I was thinking oil. When, when fluid came about in my brain, uh, I was thinking flow like oil, coat the person mm -hmm. and kind of suffocate them and that's sure. kind of what my style of jiu-jitsu is I don't move around I don't I don't try to catch things as I'm moving I kind of close you in I, I use this analogy all the time so I'll take the space that you're in and I'll just close it in real slow mm -hmm. and I'll get you here so that you're so uncomfortable mm -hmm. but you can't move and you're trying to get out of this little bubble and then I'll just do this I'll just pop open a little space for you and then you will go out that space because I let you go out that space because I'm relieving some pressure. It's, it's kind of like a volcano when they, they have side spouts and the, the pressure opens up a vent on the side of the volcano. So you, you pop that open and they come through. <laughs> Did you like blowing your hand? Yeah. So, so they come through and I know that they're coming through so I snatch them as they're coming out. So, so once they're here, spot opens, as they start to try to escape, I know where they're gonna be. I funneled them into where I wanna be. So mm -hmm. my flow like lava is volcanic in that I close you in and I, I stop you from going anywhere. Yeah. And then I just, I can, I can open this, I can open this, I can open this, I can open this. I, I can open anywhere I want to, but I just open enough where it's like, oh, I'm really uncomfortable. If I go there, I won't be, oh, no, I got submitted. Yes. And that's my idea of flow like lava. So it came yes. up. I don't think you've ever explained that to me before. No? Mm -mm. That was well, cool. No, it's on tape. That was interesting. So <clears throat> the, the idea of oil was my, my first thought, of, as I had mentioned. And I was thinking, we coat, I coat people and then I suffocate them. Sure. And, and I catch them because they, they're trying to escape from the oil. Well, one of my students, one of my first students, Mino Botros, uh, who's good friends with Dan Borovic, he's a chiropractor. He was starting his business and ended up stopping training. He says he's going to get back. Maybe he'll get back one of these days. Um, you're going to put this on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. Mina, get back to training, douche. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Mina said uh said man you flow like this is before we had the logo yeah he, he's like you flow like like lava like you have you have the power to destroy and you create jujitsu and i was like oh my god that's <laughs> 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 like mina you're a genius <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's super cool. So let's make a let's make it a volcano. And this was the first couple months that I was okay. in, that I started fluid, and uh, I hadn't had a logo yet. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna definitely put a volcano with some lava yeah. on it. And flow like lava is gonna be, because I've been a, saying I flow like oil. I don't flow okay. like water. I flow like oil. Like I'm. Yeah. I'm so a, flow like lava sounds way cooler. Right. It, it's, <laughs> and that that all comes from Mina Botros. Uh, Thank doc, you, Mina. Doctor Mina Botros. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that that flow like lava. And then when he said, you know, you have the power to destroy and to create. I'm like, that is jujitsu. Like that. If if there's something that sums up jujitsu, it's that statement of. You have the yes. power to both create and to destroy. Mm -hmm. And and I just thought that that was so cool in the lava fit. And then the volcano of the of the symbol uh, of fluid is the triangle. So it keeps the... The, um, the like Gracie homies? Yeah. The, 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 the triangle. The original. Yeah. Logo. So it keeps the shape of my foundation of like where this comes from. Mm -hmm. So the volcano kept that. And then it very much symbolizes my style of jiu-jitsu. And it also um, gives the definition with the lava coming down of what lava can do. It still follows the path of least resistance. Yeah. But as it's going, it destroys everything that it comes in contact with. And then it solidifies and makes something new. Mm -hmm. yep. It's I just like super it. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you, it's suffocating <laughs> to be under <laughs> Yeah, when he was explaining that, I felt the PTSD right there. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> I've been yeah. there. I know what it's like. That and sucks. There's, there's a lot of people that are like, I mean, that's a style of jiu-jitsu. And I know Hegan Machado, uh, he taps people out just to side control pressure. Oh. He's 300 pounds, but oh. he's, he's able to, he's a 300 pound coral belt. Oh my God. Sounds so, fun. <laughs> but he taps people out just in side control. Yeah. And his I've amount, never done that. His <laughs> amount of pressure. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Is is from what I understand, it's ridiculous. He, even Master Sauer, like when he, when I'm with Master Sauer, he talks about uh, his training with all the old Gracies and all the all the old uh, mm -hmm. practitioners, all the coral belts now, and That's you can see him kind of wander with his eye, like <laughs> he just, just kind of <laughs> shudders when he when he says certain names. Like if you will not hear him say Hickson's name in a training sense without seeing him go. A little bit of fear. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of fear. Wow. And uh, and Hegan, when he was talking about Hegan and his side control, he he said the same thing. He's just like, ah, oh, Hegan, it's just he is your heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, PTSD. Yeah, yeah. And you just learn like who has that immense pressure. Yeah. So and wow. I'm not a huge guy. Uh, I'm big bigger now, but you know I was 160 when I started. I still had that pressure. Uh, and I teach my students, you know, if you're 140 pounds, you pin a 220 pound person down. Easy. Yep. Easily. You just, just have to half learn. an inch. Yeah, sometimes a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. But you just got to learn that pressure. You got to learn where to position and how to put all of your body weight on just a, a quarter size of the person. And you put it on the right, right spot and they are not going to get up. Easy. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's wild. Brought up Master Sauer. He's coming in June. And June twelfth. Is he staying with us again? Yes. Cool. Yeah. We have Master Sauer staying at our house. We're gonna try to get him on the podcast. Yeah. For sure. Uh -huh. That'd be, cool. that that would be awesome. super fun. He's awesome. He's he's just got <clears throat> such great energy. Mm -hmm. It's so cool to be around. I still yes. remember the first thing that we started talking about. He came to our house and we went and sat outside because it was a summer day and we were on our deck. <laughs> and we were just talking about his life and everything. And I was like, yeah, I remember. Like my dad, he's been doing this for eighteen years at the time and. I remember when we got our dog, we named him Hickson because he just looked up to Hickson Gracie so much and Master Sauer started laughing and he goes, oh, I'll have to let Hickson know. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, I didn't oh, know you still yeah. talk to him. He yeah, said he's in a group chat with all the coral belts in the world. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hickson and Master Sauer are good friends still. Yeah, I figured that out. I was like, please don't yeah. tell him that we named a dog after him. <laughs> no, no, for sure. I mean... I loved that dog too. Oh yeah, I hated awesome. that dog and I loved it. it was, he was so dumb. Yeah, he was so dumb. He was the little kind of dog that would run into a wall, shake it off, and then run into another wall. Well, that was Duke. That was <laughs> yeah, that was Duke Antolana's too. Dog. <laughs> dog. Oh, Hickson never ran into a wall, but Hickson would go outside. <laughs> Not Hickson Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> Hickson, Hickson the dog. Hickson my my dog. It was a Bashan Frise. 
and he's super lovable. He's a solid, he's like 30 pounds for, for a Bashan that's like twice the size of a normal Bashan. Okay. He wasn't fat, he was solid. Like I used to play like Scarlet. Punch. Okay. Yeah, I used to punch him and he would just like, rah, he would just fight <laughs> with me. So, anyways, Hickson would go outside. He'd spend two hours outside in the yard on a chain, just running around, just doing whatever. Literally 15 seconds after he got in, he would poop in the house. <laughs> oh my goodness. Every time. Every time. He was it, so naughty. It got to the point where I just brought him into his cage and then he'd poop in his cage. <laughs> what a punk. Yeah, he was, and I, I, th I don't know if it was like a, I don't know. I don't know that dog, man. I don't understand dog philosophy. <laughs> Sometimes, man. Oh, I'm not a dog uh, coach. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So, flow like lava. That was a really cool description. Yeah. Like I said, you've never explained that to me, so that was cool. Yeah. We have a volcano behind us. I know you can't really tell yeah, in the video. I don't have my shirt on me either. You have a logo on your uh, I'll grab. Chest. I'll be right back. I'll grab a little. Yeah, we need to bring this. Is it called a tapestry? Tapestry? Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> That's easier. Backdrop. Yeah. We need to bring this backdrop down so we can stop having you guys just see a wall. And also we take our, when we do belt promotions or strikes or anything, we always use this as the backdrop for the photos. Yes. But you can always backdrop. see the bottom. So <laughs> I think we need to just bring this down like a foot so we can start getting the actual yeah. volcano in yeah. our photos. We didn't intend, when we got this, we didn't intend to do pictures and stuff here. Yeah, yeah it was just like, oh, let's put it on the wall. Yeah, this That's is cool. cool. That's lava. Yeah. That's sweet. I still have yeah. the space one. Like we should put the space one up somewhere. It'd be cool. That's Maybe yeah. over on the gray wall over there. We are going to be here. Last. We're going to be here for a few more years. So yeah. I got that deal worked out. Um, so we're not going anywhere. Uh, staying in Greenfield, staying in this space. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's exciting. It's cool too because yeah. we have our pillars painted, and one of them is the black belt with one stripe. But he got his second uh -huh. stripe a couple months yeah. ago. I'll actually get my third stripe while we're here too. Oh really? At the last. Nice. Yeah, within three years. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. That'd be fun. So, anyways, this is the logo. This is uh, some stickers that I have made up. Um, it's got obviously the Fluid Jiu Jitsu uh, brand on the bottom, and then um, the volcano. I'll show you in a bigger picture. But we've got patches made up that can go on these mm -hmm. wherever you want to. Oh, you got one right here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I said. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I said you got one. I don't listen test. to you. That's like, <laughs> I I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about three stripe blue belts? <laughs> Nobody. They don't matter. <laughs> right? <laughs> Why are you doing a podcast? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, but these are the new patches that we got. Uh, they're super cool. They're very easy to iron on. They're not very thick. Uh, like the fabric ones were pretty thick and they were a little yeah. difficult to, to sew on. So these are pretty easy. Uh, a lot of people have been putting them on their lapels here. Uh, some cool. people have them on their back. Uh, I saw someone have one on their, their pants. Um, so, but these are pretty cool. And this is the logo of Fluid. Again, you can see the, the triangle is there. Um, and then the, the upper part is the Japanese rising sun because um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu came from Japan. Um, Jiu Jitsu? To Brazil, Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, so we've got, we've got a bunch of symbolism in the, in the logo where we've got uh, the Japan reference in the top uh, from the origins, and then we've got the triangle. Um, we made it a distinct triangle rather than like a like actual a rocky volcano. Mountain. Yeah, yeah. Um, specifically to symbolize the Gracie Jiu Jitsu background. And then the lava is my, um, my style and, mm -hmm. and the, the branch that, that I've kind of gone through. And then uh, fluid is just a description of the velocity or the viscosity of um, lava. Yes. So, yeah, lots of things in the in the logo. It uh, it turned out extremely well. Um, when we Who were designed that for you? His name is Martin Quick, and he's from Stevens Point. He's just a graphic designer. Sure. There. It was actually really really cheap, and and I didn't realize how cheap I was getting the logo. Oh. Um, and he was he was fantastic, and I've gone back to him for a couple other things. Um, he. Uh, he did nine mock-ups for me nice. and, and sent me nine. Yeah, because you sent me those when you were mm -hmm. opening, and you're like, which one do we like the most? Yeah. And I helped you pick it out. And then I was able to pick three, and then I, I could modify those three, and it was less than 200 bucks. 
awesome so it was cool so got the <coughs> the logo made up uh, and it has a lot of symbolism to it most people don't know what the symbolism is but that's cool yeah mm -hmm. but cool that's there. that's what it is yeah very cool so there's reasons behind the insanity of fluid <laughs> <laughs> yeah somewhat I was I was telling uh, I was telling Ephraim yesterday who came in who uh, wants to be an affiliate of, of yeah. fluid and shout out to sweeps real real tough purple belt three stripe purple belt came in and uh, got some great roles in very respectful uh, very cool guy first time meeting him uh, doesn't have a professor up here in Wisconsin and we had met him before he liked my energy I liked his energy and it, was, it was a great meeting yeah <laughs> of styles yeah, and cool. uh, just yeah he was super respectful and super fun to be around yep great roles Super solid. They gave us t-shirts. Rolls kind of like me. Rolls very loud. We saw that. Yeah. Yes. So he'll he'll fit the style well. Um, just need to figure out if his jiu-jitsu philosophy fits and, and yeah. make sure that that works. I still remember at the competition, I was watching Denise, and I was just looking around his at what? his competition, and I She's saw her. Belt. Yeah, and I saw her, and she was a purple belt female, and like we don't really have those around here. We had Joanna for a little bit, but she didn't stay, and then. We had we have a bunch of blue belt girls who are great, and then I was like a purple belt. That's like a unicorn right there. Like let me go. So I was following her and I was watching her matches like very closely just to see how it was. And she kind of like caught me watching a while, and I was like, sorry, I just really want to see. Like I want really wanted to watch you. And she's like, no, that's fine. Like totally cool. And then I remember she was waiting for a match because no one was uh, stepping up to the mat, and she's like, you want to fight me? And I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> but, no, we had a we had a really great exchange at that competition, so it was super cool to see her yesterday, and yeah. I was really sad I couldn't roll. Yeah. But anyway, continue. Sorry. Yeah. Um, where were we? We had a good time. We had good rolls. Um, we were, we're talking, talking about, about those three. Yeah. You were talking about how he came by, and you were gonna say something. And I got really excited uh, about a purple belt girl because it's yeah. just how I. You were talking about affiliates. You were talking <laughs> about. Yeah. <laughs> But Nick, yeah, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> on my on my podcast that I do on Fridays, um, mm -hmm. when Nick wasn't on the show and it was Josh and I, we'd always ask Nick to do our research for us yeah, and look up things and, and comments, and, and he'd let us know um, the things. So that's where that comment come from. I would make stupid gifs so. of people dancing, but <laughs> um, but philosophy of jujitsu. Oh, this is where it was. So uh, I turned some people away from fluid. Oh yeah. Uh, that have come in the door who have uh, either made requests or stated their goals and uh, in my judgment I've said you know what maybe you should try this school maybe you should try that school uh, this might be better suited yeah something that fits you, you better yeah and and I told Ephraim as he as he walked out because he's trying to build the school up in Wachoma that uh, you know sometimes it's, it's hard to, to say no to a member and, and to a membership Especially in early stages yeah but to protect the integrity of what you're trying to build and not let someone in that is going to um, go against what you're trying to build is super super important it can't be emphasized enough in my opinion uh, because the culture that you're trying to, to build uh, if you get one person in there who isn't quite what you want as a culture and then that person brings one of their friends and then they bring one of their friends and then you have five or six people now who mm -hmm. don't fit the mold of what you were wanting and now it starts to deviate from what you had intended to mm -hmm. do and and now your culture is a is a hodgepodge of a couple things yes. rather than the the thing that you wanted and it's, it's no it's like if you're if your kid ends up on drugs and goes out and you know, yeah, is homeless and yeah. You know. It's that saying where you're the sum of the five people that surround you. Yeah, and it's funny that you say that because you know Josh and I at my Odyssey we work on company culture with companies, and that's the same philosophy when you're hiring people. Yeah, that are going to come work with you. You know, when they get into the workplace and they mesh with everybody well, it's a good fit. Yeah, but maybe they have some skill that you really want, but they don't mesh don't with mesh. the team. Yeah, you got. Then they're going to start to bring in people that. You know, mesh with them and not everybody else. And yep. then you've got these clashing cultures yep. in your company. It's almost the same thing, but it is the same thing. It is the same. This is. It's a know. company. I mean, it's it's a it is a business, but it, this is a 
this is different than a business because it's family. And if we're letting people into the family who, you know, want to offer our kids drugs, you know, if you're fostering a right. kid mm -hmm. who's trying to push drugs on your kids, like, yeah. you got to get rid of that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'd say it's more important here as a gym because, you know, gym members are actually paying to come into the gym. Yeah. So you can't tell someone, like, hey, you can't be this way here. Right. If you're someone's boss, you'd be like, you need to change this style if you're going to stay here. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, the, the old saying, you don't hire skill, you hire, per hire personality, you teach skill. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of where I'm I'm at. And um, I've, I've turned some people away uh, for the requests that they've said, you know, I, I would like this. And I said, well, I don't do that here because everybody's, you know, that's this is not what we do here. But yep. down the road, I know they do that there. Mm -hmm. And then there's been other people who've come in and said, oh, I want to fight in the cage. And it's like, okay, there's two other schools that I recommend if you want to fight in the cage, they're yeah. going to be great for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I have friends at those schools. I, I'm friends with the owners of those schools, and I have no problem sending people over to those places <coughs> um, to get what the the client or the the like, person needs more than what they can get. Yeah, like yeah. Keyshawn wanted to fight, mm -hmm. so we sent him to Pier Vida. Uh, uh, he's at Rufus now. Rufus. Yeah, he's at yeah. Rufus now. He was at Primal for a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a jumper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, he wanted to come back here. He wanted to do his jujitsu here and his striking at Rufus Sport. And I told him, I said, I don't I don't really think that's a good idea. Like you need to you need to be at a team and you need to stay yeah. at a team. And I like Keyshawn, and he's a talented grappler, mm -hmm. uh, and I would have loved to have honed him, but he has aspirations to fight, so this is just not the school that, mm -hmm. that his aspirations are going to be met. Right. I'd make him a better grappler than any other school would, for sure, uh, because the, the technique here um, is just, it, it's second to none. You know, I put myself up with, with anybody, and uh, I put my, my words where my mouth was. Yeah, put it all on the line. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, my, my students are, are very good, and we can see that at competitions when we go. And you know, we, we always have if we have five people go, we have you know, seven or eight medals every time, and everybody got a medal. Um, you know, yeah. we're not typically, that's the last time. Yeah, last time was a little bit of a we bad had a day, we had a few injuries that was a little yep. different. But we still medal. I'm almost everybody except for one medals yes. at that, um, and only <laughs> only one of the people who medaled um, got a medal just for showing up. So, <laughs> so that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we got to keep the culture of what we have. I, I think that's that's the most important thing because longevity-wise, uh, you know, when COVID hit and and a lot of gyms failed, yes. it's because they didn't have the right culture and they, they just let anybody in they're like oh yeah I'll take your money and you can come train jiu-jitsu here and what I specifically did was okay if you if you want this you probably should go there mm -hmm. if you want this you should probably go there if you want this then this is probably the right place for you mm -hmm. yep what's it I love about our culture here yeah so I think we were talking about what our favorite thing about either jiu-jitsu in general or fluid is and I definitely said the people here. Yeah, because they're awesome. Yeah. And I, I tell people all the time, I'm the biggest douche at this place. I <laughs> <laughs> say so everybody else is cool. If you like me, you're gonna like everybody else because I'm the worst. <laughs> <laughs> but you're honest about it, right? Which and is uh, I, I'm a big thing in this world. <laughs> I'm uh, unabashedly honest. Yes. <laughs> Girlfriend's son made dinner the other night. She told him she's like. She's like, don't ask Brent if you don't want it on his answer. Because <laughs> I will tell you the truth, no matter how bad it hurts your feelings. Yeah. I won't say anything if it hurts your feelings, and and I don't have to say anything. But if you ask me, you better be assured you're going to get a straight answer. I will not lie to you to tickle your ears and make you feel good about yourself. <laughs> no bushes to beat around over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing at all. It's, yeah. So. That's a good thing. There's a bunch of different styles in jujitsu, which is kind of something that we touched on a little bit. And I remember you saying that each of our four black belts here have their own styles. Yeah. And it's funny because whenever Nick talks about it, so we have Mike, Rob, Jason, and you. And he's always like, yeah, I kind of feel like Mike and Rob and Brent had a baby, and that's me. <laughs> <laughs> he's 
true. Could when are you going to get your hairy chest? This is Robin. I got some tiny little hairs coming through. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I flow with some of Rob's sequences. Yep. I have a lot of urine pressure, and I have a lot of what Mike Coy calls old man jujitsu techniques. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His habit guard. Yeah, well. Yeah. You don't play habit very I much. I don't play habit guard much. I just play butterfly. <laughs> butterfly is basically spider, or habit guard is basically spider butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I have those three facets of jujitsu, and I love that I have those different professors that I've been able to learn under and they all teach their own different classes and I go to just all of them because I get to soak it up and put it together mm-hmm. in a way that yeah. it's a hybrid. none of the three of them actually put together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a hybrid. Super fun. Yeah. No, it's cool. And that's why I was at the seminar with Mike because I love te- learning from Mike. And that's why I went to the seminar with Henry because, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's so much to learn that you get. So if you get a recipe for food and you make that recipe and and I get that recipe I'm gonna make that food and it's gonna taste very different it, it's not gonna be right. the same mm-hmm. and and you you have that with uh, grandmas and mothers and mm-hmm. daughters and you'll see that they have the same recipe but they're all a little bit different they all have right. their own flair and that's what jiu-jitsu is like you have all these black belts that have the same recipe but they've made it their own because that's spice. how they like it. Does yeah. it Sour have an analogy with yeah. that? With coconut rice. rice. Coconut, coconut rice. rice. It's not coconut no. rice. It's cooking the rice. Oh. <laughs> cooking the rice. But because of his Brazilian accent, I thought it was coconut for years. <laughs> <laughs> so, but cooking the rice. Jiu Jitsu is rice. And, and what you add to it is your game. So the, the bowl of rice is given to everybody. Well, how do you like your rice? Do you want a little tomato in it? Do you want some garlic? Do you want some cilantro? Do you want some lime? Do you want you know wild rice in it? Do you do you want do you want the barambolo rice? Do you want pressure rice? Do you want loop choke rice? Do you want sticky rice? Uh, heel hook rice? You know what kind of rice do you want? So jujitsu is just a bowl of rice, mm-hmm. and you have to make your rice, mm-hmm. and everybody makes their rice different. So years after you've been training. You know, you could start, everybody starts with that bowl of rice, but now this person's got tomatoes, garlics, and onions, and asparagus, and, you know, Eggs. all this, yeah, <laughs> and this person's got, you know, fried rice with with green onions and bamboo shoots, right, but, <laughs> but they're so different, like, they yeah. started with the same rice, but this is fried oriental rice, yeah, and this is Mexican, you know, with corn and, you know, Mm-hmm. And it's so I, different, yeah. but does it? It doesn't mean that they're that they're not black belts and they're not. Yeah, it doesn't good mean one's better than the other. Right, but they're completely different from each other. Like like one's water yeah. and one's lava. Yeah, and it depends on your taste of jujitsu. Yeah. what what you like, what your body works mm-hmm. for you. Yep. Yeah, because not everything works for everyone. And no, for mm-hmm. sure not. For sure not. And it, yeah. the, the the main mechanics do. But, but the, the concepts the, transcend. The, right. So the bowl of rice works. Mm-hmm. And, and the bowl of rice is, is a pretty big bowl. But the flavors are very widely different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, flavors don't always complement each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a, good, that's a good analogy, too. Yeah. You can't yeah. put soy sauce on uh, chicken? Mexican rice. On tons of chicken? Well, you can do that. Mm. I did it once. Mm. <laughs> it didn't work out that well, but I tried it. <laughs> it's like I tried it and I got immediately he tapped out. He chicken in soy sauce. Like boiled it in, in soy, sauce. soy sauce. I was trying to season it. <laughs> Nick doesn't cook much. <laughs> I was doing you my best. But he's good at jujitsu. You tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's all good. All right. Well, that's this was funny. kind of a fun talk. Yeah. So, yeah. any last minute thoughts on flowing like lava? Any. Wisdom no. words you want to give? Because no. Mike had a lot of wisdom words. You were just like, here's right. Wisdom <laughs> words. <laughs> I mean, Rex I'm just kidding. I'm concept. kidding. He's, Come on. he's a great teacher. We learned so yeah. much from him. I, I'm old. I Every, have 25 years. Most of people are old. Life. Most people are old and been doing one thing for a long time can teach that one thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, most people. Um, if you're old and you've switched things every couple years, you probably can't teach Jack. 
because you haven't gotten good at anything. You've spent two you years. You've not doing become it. an expert. Yeah. So yeah. You, you've done things so intermittently that you've never gotten to the point where it's automatic. And, and it's weird. I, I always I always think about this. This is recent for me, and since I started fluid, but I'll explain something, a, a technique, and then I'll have 15 groups here, 10 groups here, and they're all doing it, and and I'll look at it and I'll go, no, your foot's in the wrong place, and then they move it to another place and it's in the wrong place again, and I'll be like, no, put your foot on the hip, and they'll they'll put it on the hip, but they'll have a different angle, and and there's so many like little subtleties to that. But I see it, and I'm like, I mean, no, you gotta turn your foot this way, like mm -hmm. here, so that you can push. If you have it here, you're pushing the wrong way. If you go here, and it, I see these things, and I'm like, man, I know a lot of jujitsu. Like, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it astounds me mm -hmm. that I can just look at a situation and go, no, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, but, like that's that's not where you want to be. You gotta mm -hmm. do this, mm -hmm. and I do that all the time. And I was, I was training with, uh, it was Henry. It was one of Henry's moves. And Henry was doing some stuff, and he's he's a very watery guy. Yeah. He flows like crazy. Um, they call him the monkey. Oh. And um, he he was doing this this sequence, and he did a couple things. And I was working with Sheldon, who's another black belt. And I did it. I'm like, man, that doesn't feel good. I, huh. I don't feel right doing that. And uh, I grabbed Henry. And I'm like, Henry, how how did you place your your foot here, your your shit? And he, he did it, he's like, you gotta put it here, because if you put it there, and I try it again, I'm like, that just doesn't, like, I can't, mm. I, I feel it so your body. uncomfortable right there mm. to get it there. And then Sheldon, you know, he's a giant, he's 250, 260, yeah. and he had a hard time getting it there too. And it's like, it's like, does this just not work for our body types? And then after a little bit, both Sheldon and I got a little bit, but it wasn't like, oh yeah, this is super cool, we're gonna do this, it was mm. more like, well, we ha I know where I need to get it, but I'm not getting it there. And it has a black belt learning from another black belt. Like mm -hmm. he was like, no, you gotta put your knee here. And he did, but boom, and he was just there. And I'm like, oh, now I see what my students are doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I can't, I can't get it quite there. So I got, it, it taught me a little yeah. bit about. Um, Being a student again. Yeah, and I am a student all the time with Master Sauer, but he simplifies things so much. It's crazy. It's just ridiculous the <laughs> things that he does, man. And yeah, that's that's how you can tell he's a complete expert. Because they say like if you can't describe, you know, a certain thing in one simple five sentence, yeah, or to a five yeah. year old, then you don't understand. You don't it actually fully. understand it. Yeah. Yeah. The things he does and, and for those of you who don't know, Master Sauer comes in and he says, Okay, what do you have for questions? He doesn't even know what he's gonna teach. He doesn't even have like a specific thing where he's like, I'm gonna show this and I know exactly what I'm mm -hmm. gonna show. You'll say, well, how do you get on the knee on belly? And it'll go, well, you can do this and then this and everybody just goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that before. Yeah. Like as a black belt, I'm like, every I don't time. Know why. <laughs> and yeah, and I've been, I've, I've seen him now, you know, in the last five years, I've seen him two dozen times ish. Okay. You know, at least at least fifteen times, and I'm now starting to see things for a second time uh, after seeing him, you know, fifteen times. Yeah. But I'm still seeing things for the first time. That's like, like, in a seminar where he does five, six, seven things, I'll see one or two of those things for a second time. Now the last couple, mm. and everything else is still like, whoa, that's super cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. I love it. I can't wait to continue learning. Can't wait to tell you guys about our journeys forever. when we're coral belts. <laughs> yeah, it's a forever <laughs> process, that's for sure. Yep. So, D, D Jiu Jits. D Jiu Jits. You sit. <laughs> what did I say? D Jiu Jits. I don't. That's you still. Still, still you. dual. D, uh, still? <laughs> dual? I don't know. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks so much for coming up on the podcast. Where can people find you? Where should people find you? On Facebook, search Brendan Fitzgerald, or uh, Fluid Jiu Jitsu. I don't know. Com. My account got hacked on Facebook not so long ago, and I had to create a new one. So, don't friend the one with the feet. Okay, I'll put a, I'll put a link in the bio. <laughs> yeah. Um, of our Facebook so, page. Yeah, you can find me there, and then Fluid uh, Jiu Jitsu at um, at gmail .com is the email. Uh, fluid Dash Jiu Jitsu dot com. Dot com is the uh, website. Um, that's been updated 
recently, so there should be some good stuff on there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then on Facebook, we're on there. I'm very, I'm pretty active on Facebook uh, with trying to get the information out. It seems to be a pretty good medium for people. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. All right. You guys have a great day. Bye bye. Peace.